at this point, I would like to open the public hearing. Who's first? Yes, sir. Gentlemen, Mr. Smith. Card number 5533. <laughs> I'm opposed to new regulations on today's agenda. I ask that you table the decision on today's agenda for at least one month, or I will have to pursue other legal resources that I might have. My name is Lee Smith. I'm a commercial fisherman. Proud commercial fisherman. Proud to have you here, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, my registration number is 4073. I am opposed to all these new regulations that have been brought up today. I ask you to table this. It needs to be discussed further. I've attended three or four of your meetings now, and I have heard a few statements that um, don't quite ring true. And I want to refer you to section 28.2203.1 of the Virginia Code that sets forth what the Blue Crab Fishery Managing Management Plan will include. And it says, the plan shall be designed to reverse any fishing practices, environmental stress, and habitat deterioration, negatively impacting the short and long-term viability and sustainability of the crab stock in Virginia waters. It says, the protection of spawning stock, nursery areas, and habitat shall be of prime consideration in the plan. It says, at a minimum, the plan shall include, but not be limited to, number two, suggested measures to assure water quality conditions necessary for blue crab survival and reproduction, including identification of areas where water quality is such that onshore mechanisms for water quality protection are needed to protect and restore crab populations and habitat areas. So I don't remember who it was today who said we can't do anything about the water quality because we're the VMRC, and I beg to differ. Mr. Fox right there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, gentlemen, today I ask you to table the decision on today's agenda for at least one month, or I will have to assist these watermen in pursuing whatever other legal recourses they may have. And I thank you for your consideration. Coastal Conservation has a mission that we put the resource first. That's the first thing we consider. It doesn't make any difference whether overfishing caused the demise or whether water pollution or the loss of seagrasses, uh, even consumer demand. You have the chance today to do something about the crabs. It's up to you. People have come before you in the past and said it's a water quality problem. They've come up and said it's a predation problem, lots of SAV beds. I agree that a fraction of the problems with blue crabs is related to these issues. To me, the major problem is overcapitalization of the fishery. If you want to reset the clock to 1994 on the number of permitted pots, by, then by all means, you should reduce the pots on a given license by 30% as recommended by the Blue Crab Advisory Committee. I know that the blue crab biologically faces many obstacles, not just fishing pressure. Its primary nursery habitat, seagrass, has declined sharply, as you know. Its secondary nursery habitats, salt marsh fringe coves, and shorelines have been degraded by shoreline development and pollution. Some of its natural predators, such as striped bass and planted croaker, have shown a resurgence. Bass have some non-native predators, witness the blue catfish. Consequently, I ask that in the coming year, the commission staff join with BIMS to formally pursue ecosystem-based management of the blue crab, such as predator control, habitat restoration, as a uh, holistic approach to restoration of the blue crab stock and fishery, and as a way to alleviate the need to focus solely on the uh, working water and phase uh, fishery crisis. You may or may not be aware that we had talked to Dr. Worth after he got back from his surgery pertaining to the seagrass issue, especially in the area around Tangier Sound, as to the degradation there and some, some matters that can be looked at as far as that's concerned. So uh, your point is well made as far as your last paragraph is concerned, and we thank you. I'm Gil Palmer. I'm Gil Waterman. I'm Beach Park, numbers 2114. I've listened to what everybody had to say. This thing is a travel state. And I've come to two conclusions. First, there's going to be a catch reduction, whether we like it or not. And the second one is that everyone needs to warm in this room, including myself, so I'm taking a hit. If, if you and the regulators don't regulate, there won't be many crabs left. 
and I think you're doing a good job. Uh, my card number is 5028. I'm opposed to all these regulations. And uh, number one, commercial fishermen don't go on unemployment, and they don't draw uh, you know government subsidies. They they pull their weight and get through just like this until times come up. You know, the only thing this is going to do, these regulations are going to do is put hardworking fishermen out of work. That's all. That's it. You want to close down the seasons in the fall of the year, that's when all the true commercial fishermen are working. All the weekend warriors are then going back to their regular jobs and pulled up all their gear by the end. You only hurt real, true commercial fishermen by doing these regulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you take the last couple of months off the season and you do something harmful to dredging, there's a whole bunch of us that aren't going to be around to see all this abundance of great crabs the following spring. You know, and, and we were on the right track. We were heading down the road. And I, and I almost felt like this a few years ago. And then we were all interrupted and set back again by this nitwit 15% by state blue crab committee reduction. Eight hour days, this, that, and the other. That was real effective. Now we have to have 34% on top of that. What does that do the arithmetic? That's getting close to, you know, 40%. You get 15 percent of what you had, and then another 34 percent or less than that is probably really 50 percent. Yes, sir. Every time we something goes through this crab committee meeting, by the time it gets up here, it's diluted. But there's other things at the end of it that end up being worse. Uh, I, I sometimes wonder why we even waste our time going through that procedure. I understand where you're coming from, but please, at the same time, consider some of the things that we, I mean, we're not operating in a vacuum. I can assure you we're not. We're trying to do our very best to for what's best for the fishery. And I, 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 just, I just don't think that you're giving this particular issue enough deliberation. Water quality is a big issue. Predation is a big issue. If we can't address that, we, we're not going to accomplish anything. If we're going to do something like this, something has to be done to help water and compensate things. I've figured up on Jack's calculations. It's four months and 20 days people are going to be without work. I doubt it's 5% of the people in the country that can go four months and 20 days without income, without losing everything they have. I could never back anything without a stipulation that some funding for the watermen has to be found. The watermen have suffered enough. And it's time if you want to